This is not a photograph. What? This is an artist's rendering. So picture this. You've gotten up and are enjoying your coffee. Rapidly moving through the kitchen, down the hall, and out the open window is a little blob. A fleeting, blurry glance is all you have before it disappears. What exactly was that? What is your initial assumption? A local feline? It's a squirrel, right? Perhaps an unusual animal like a fox or raccoon? Do you think it was an alien? Well, astronomy has been experiencing a parallel story. In October of 2017, something flew quite close to Earth. In spite of astronomers' best efforts, the object faded too quickly for most telescopes to detect it after only approximately a week. It was so little that we couldn't make out its form. The object's speed alone told us it had to have originated from beyond our solar system. Its name was Oumuamua. The news media went crazy once Neil deGrasse Tyson made a revelation about it. Join us as we explore what Neil deGrasse Tyson revealed about Oumuamua and the implications it has for the future of the Earth. The discovery of interstellar visitors to our solar system has been highly anticipated by astronomers for decades. For decades, it had been generally accepted that some dust and cosmic rays came from beyond our solar system. It was also speculated that some of the comets in the Oort cloud had been taken from the Sun's stellar siblings back when they were still young. What was lacking was evidence of a large object traveling from beyond the solar system to Earth. These things are known as interstellar objects. The PanSTARRS-2 telescope in Hawaii identified the first verified interstellar streak in an image on October 18, 2017. Because of how quickly it was traveling across the sky, the object appeared more like a streak than a point of light. The Hawaiian word for advance scout inspired the naming of that thing. Within two weeks of its discovery, Oumuamua had dimmed so much in brightness that it was invisible to all but the largest ground-based telescopes. The key factors that stoked the ensuing disagreement were the length of that observing window and the related ambiguity in its physical features. The first impression was that Oumuamua resembled a comet or an asteroid. We couldn't make out any surface features because of how far away it was, but its brightness across a range of wavelengths suggested it would be similar to water-rich asteroids or inactive comets. The ice on comets generally evaporates when they get warm, and we observe them create a coma as the gas escapes, but this one showed no signs of outgassing or cometary activity. This expanding gas acts like rocket thrust, causing comets to jerk back and change their orbital path. The astronomical community rushed to determine Oumuamua's significance, according to Neil deGrasse Tyson. Two unexpected results emerged from an examination of its luminosity fluctuations. First, Oumuamua's fluctuating brightness indicated that it rotated every eight hours or so, although in a pattern that did not quite repeat itself. In most cases, we can determine an asteroid or comet's rotation time by watching its surface characteristics come and go out of view. But in this case, the period was erratic. Tumbling rotation is indicated, which is a perturbed but not unprecedented spin condition for tiny solar system planets. The second unexpected aspect of its tumble was that at times, it was nearly 10 times weaker than usual. This cannot be explained by just external characteristics, ruling out a spherical shape. The two most plausible configurations are either a pancake with axis ratios of about 6 to 6 to 1, or a cigar with axis ratios of about 8 to 1 to 1. The pancake shape is more plausible since it is more likely to be seen edge-on than the cigar shape because Oumuamua rarely becomes very dim. This conclusion came too late, however, as the public had already internalized the idea that Oumuamua was a long, needle-like object. Oumuamua's origins became a hot topic of discussion, with a dozen different theories being put forth within a few months. This could be a remnant of an earlier generation of planets that was partially melted in the atmosphere of a dying giant star, or it could be something as simple as an asteroid or dead comet evicted from its home planetary system. Despite the contention, all models in the scholarly literature stuck to their naturalistic roots. 
Measurements of Oumuamua's orbit as it sped away from Earth were the thorn in the side of traditional origins models. Up to two months after its discovery, its position was measured by the Hubble Space Telescope and the Very Large Telescopes in Chile, providing a highly accurate estimate of its orbital track. It was determined through analysis that Oumuamua's route when it disappeared from our view deviated from a strictly gravitational trajectory by a few tens of thousands of kilometers. Something beyond the influence of gravity had nudged it away from the sun. Many experts separately hypothesized shortly after Oumuamua's discovery that it could be a man-made object rather than a natural body, like a comet or asteroid. Indeed, many scientists and members of the lay public had been prepared for the possibility of such a thing by Arthur C. Clarke's 1973 book, Rendezvous with Rama, whose opening chapter mirrors some of the circumstances of the actual discovery of Oumuamua with spooky prescience. In the book, comet hunters stumble upon a long, cylinder-shaped object that is later confirmed to be an alien spacecraft after its orbit brings it close to the sun and then back out again. Planetary scientists scrutinized their data for any hints of strange hue or spectrum traits that would imply fabrication, and astronomers on Twitter enthusiastically offered the name Rama for our new visitor. Unfortunately, the real object did not match Clark's vision beyond its rough shape and trajectory. It was much smaller. Its colors were those of typical solar system comets and asteroids, and it appeared to be tumbling in an uncontrolled manner, making its brightness highly variable rather than constant. The object was found as it was leaving the solar system, making any further investigation impossible. An article by Bialy and Loeb evaluated the possibility that Oumuamua could be a light sail, an incredibly thin sheet used for spacecraft propulsion using radiation pressure, and this became the most widely held theory that Oumuamua was manufactured. This research focused on the likelihood of survival of thin objects in interstellar space, but it ended with the exotic scenario that Oumuamua might have been one of these things, perhaps a scrap from a launch vehicle. The light sails we use are often thousands of times thinner than the one Bialy and Loeb estimate Oumuamua to be. After millions or billions of years in interstellar space, it is also uncertain if such a sail would not fold up or if it would truly continue to tumble. Before recently, it was unclear whether the light sail idea suited the data any better than a comet would because no one had analyzed what the brightness variation and accelerations of a light sail may be. Nonetheless, the idea has received widespread media attention due to numerous interviews with the second author Avi Loeb and the subsequent publication of his trade science book Extraterrestrial, The First Sign of Intelligent Life Beyond Earth, which debuted on the New York Times bestseller list and was positively reviewed in the print edition of that newspaper. Loeb has made bold claims about the quality of the evidence supporting Oumuamua being artificial in his book and public talks which are far less cautious and equivocal than the Bialy and Loeb article. The adage that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence has been the focus of much of the meta-discussion surrounding Loeb's statements. In his book and other writings, Loeb attempts to downplay the unusual nature of his claim that Oumuamua represents alien technology. In the end, this is a philosophical argument against the assumption that many of us have made and the subsequent interpretations of the facts that have been based on that assumption, that the object is natural. If we presume it is natural before we begin our research, then we cannot claim to have come to the conclusion that it is natural based on evidence, which may appear like asking the same question twice to Loeb. We would counter that the scientists analyzing Oumuamua in a natural context have not completely ruled out the possibility of alien technology. Many of us participated in the earlier discussions about the possibility of it being an artifact. Rather, we have concluded that this possibility is so remote and the evidence so scant that it is not worth pursuing. After all, a hidden implication of Sagan's adage is that whoever makes an outlandish assertion must put in the effort to prove it is credible. This point, however, can only be debated philosophically. And it all comes down to how likely one thinks it is that alien spacecraft visit the solar system. We find the claim to be extraordinary, requiring far more evidence than exists to be seriously entertained. 
Considering that Loeb evidently thinks the claim to be pretty reasonable, we need not perform much more analysis than the superficial one he has already done for us. Is there anything else we need to see to know for sure that Oumuamua is not man-made? Loeb presents in extraterrestrial three major abnormalities and two minor anomalies that, in his opinion, support the notion that Oumuamua isn't man-made. Minor pieces of evidence include the space density of similar objects implied by its discovery and its velocity through interstellar space, while the major pieces of evidence are its shape, reflectivity, or albedo, and most importantly to Loeb, its non-gravitational acceleration. Scientists claim that Oumuamua is more like a mirror or a reflective solar sail than a real body because it reflects at least 10 times as much light as a typical solar system object. The truth is that even if Oumuamua reflected 90% of the light that touched it, its albedo would still be 0.90, making it equally as reflective as many icy worlds in our solar system, such as the huge Kuiper Belt asteroid Eris. However, Oumuamua's albedo has yet to be determined. In fact, it is hard to tell whether Oumuamua was a very huge but dark body or a small but reflective body from a single measurement, the brightness. A body's apparent brightness in the solar system is proportional to its size. We now know that asteroids have reflectivities of roughly 5% to 20%, up to 50%, that comets' dusty nuclei have reflectivities of about 2% to 7%, and that Pluto's surface has a reflectivity of about 60% to 70%. To now, all we know about Oumuamua's size is that it evaded detection by the Spitzer Space Telescope, which would have picked up its infrared light if it were sufficiently large. Thus, Oumuamua could not have been too extreme in the big and dark category, but this simply tells us that its albedo must be larger than 4%. Any planet or moon in the solar system would do, one would need to know both Oumuamua's albedo and the albedo of a solar sail in order to put the solar sail idea to the test. The former can't be determined without first learning what size the thing is. Neither can be determined with any certainty, because we lack knowledge of the alien's design requirements, other than that it be reflective at the wavelength at which it was employed. One may argue, however, that a solar sail would have an albedo of one, or perfect reflectivity, throughout a wide range of wavelengths. The fact that Oumuamua was shown to be red, meaning that it reflected less strongly at blue wavelengths than red, contradicts this theory. Non-gravitational acceleration with no signs of outgassing or fragmentation is a major argument. Oumuamua is not natural since it underwent an acceleration different from gravity, as it departed the sun that no other natural solar system body has undergone. The final Hubble Space Telescope view of Oumuamua confirmed that the object had suffered a non-gravitational acceleration, establishing its position in the sky. Keep in mind that Oumuamua's orbit around the Sun was nearly identical to a hyperbolic orbit due only to the force of gravity. It's not like it made a sharp turn toward Earth and then shot out toward Mars. Loeb argues not that it veered off in such a way, but rather that the fact that it veered off at all suggests it is so light that even sunlight could push it around. This, in turn, suggests that it is not a large, massive object like a comet or asteroid, but rather something designed to be gently pushed by starlight, like a light sail. The orbit was slightly off from what would be expected based on gravity alone, but this was not unprecedented. Non-gravitational acceleration is a common occurrence for comets, and this causes them to move away from the sun ever so little. This acceleration fluctuates as the square root of the comet's distance from the sun due to how much sunlight hits and heats its surface. To put it another way, the comet's speed is determined by the rocket effect created when gases are pushed off the sunlit side of the comet by sublimating surface ice. Comets often experience an acceleration of 0.01% of the strength of the gravitational acceleration due to this impact. This is indeed unusual, given Oumuamua's gravity strength was closer to 1% of the strength of gravity. But does the rocket effect have to be ruled out because of this enormous acceleration? Rocket effect force, on the other hand, is proportional to an object's surface area, but inertia is directly related to mass. The ratio of surface area to total mass is greater for smaller objects. 
To see this, think of slicing up a cucumber. The total mass of the cucumber remains the same, but the surface area of all the pieces is much greater than when only the green skin was on the outside. This means the rocket effect on them will be disproportionately larger than their size. So if Oumuamua is indeed very small, and not just very thin, the rocket effect acceleration makes perfect sense. If Oumuamua's orbital deviation was caused by outgassing, then it must have lost 10% of its mass, or so the theory goes. This is correct, but it does not rule out natural explanations, especially if Oumuamua is primarily made of ice rather than rock. Extreme mass loss, like that of a bar of bath soap after numerous uses, is responsible for the enormous axis ratios observed in this object. Comets, according to Loeb, are ungainly rocks because of the way their uneven surfaces trap ice. The outgassing from melting ice provides velocity across this cratered and cratered surface. The end outcome is a choppy speedup. The deviation of Oumuamua from a hyperbolic route through the solar system and the variation in its rotation period are both reliable indicators of its acceleration. We can't say for sure whether or not the first one had a steady acceleration because our measurements of its route through the solar system are too limited. The outgassing necessary to explain Oumuamua's acceleration would have generated a torque, spinning it up to speeds considerably faster than we witnessed it falling, and possibly shattering it into pieces, as found in a work cited by Loeb. However, this is the case only if Oumuamua's whole mass is outgassed from a single immobile jet. Recent research has revealed that if Oumuamua's jet instead followed the substellar point, the induced spin would not cause breakup, but would instead match the observed tumbling rotation, rather than being an artifact of some other mechanism. As we have seen, there have been considerable attempts to represent Oumuamua as a natural object, and these have resulted in a few viable hypotheses that explain most or all of Oumuamua's features, while many questions remain. If you can't discover a flawless, universally recognized natural model, that doesn't prove it's artificial. The alternative model has to be examined to see if it provides a better fit to the data. To validate or deny Loeb's assertions would require a precise model of a light sail that might explain the findings which he has not provided. To determine whether or not Loeb's allegation was supported by the data, Wen Han Zhou and his colleagues undertook such an analysis in August 2022. If Oumuamua were a hard, thin sheet traveling across the solar system, they calculated its interstellar flight path, tumbling photometric attributes, and predicted orbital deviations. They determined that such a sheet could not have produced Oumuamua's results. Because of the hydrogen gas between the stars and the magnetic fields in the galaxy, Oumuamua would have had to make a significant course correction if it had been headed for the solar system. Second, they discovered that a light sail tumbling through space would be accelerated not simply away from the sun, as comets often are and as Oumuamua was, but also noticeably to the side. This is a major inconsistency between Oumuamua's behavior and Loeb's model. The researchers concluded that if Oumuamua were a thin sheet, it would have to be sighted edge-on at least occasionally, making it too faint to detect. In a nutshell, Oumuamua probably wasn't a flat, solid, shiny sheet, even if other light sail models might suit the data. The fact that detailed, natural models do exist that fit, but we have no artificial model that fits is a blow against the light sail theory. Whatever it is, Oumuamua is teaching us how to hunt for signs of extraterrestrial technology in the solar system, the variety of interstellar objects, and the process of planet formation. We're excited to see what the future brings. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.